after studying this module you should be able to identify various forensically important biological fluids you should develop an overview of a number of biological fluids commonly analyzed in forensic science laboratories you should understand basic components of blood semen saliva urine and other forensically important biological fluids you should also be able to appreciate the use of these biological fluids in forensic case work biological fluids and their types forensic biology is the application of biological analysis methods particularly serological methods to legal investigations serology involves the investigation of bodily fluids particularly the likes of blood semen saliva all of which are commonly found at certain crime scenes bodily fluids can be divided into two categories excreted fluids and secreted fluids excreted fluids that may be found at a crime scene include feces vomit bile and sebum or skin oil secreted fluids include blood plasma semen saliva female ejaculate and urine when a potential bodily fluid is first discovered at a crime scene actions may be required to visualize the stain some biological samples are difficult to see with the naked eye and require particular light or chemical additions to reveal their presence presumptive tests may be conducted to give some indication as to the identity of the substance now these tests are by no means conclusive and further analysis will be essential the sample must be then collected and stored appropriately so as to preserve its integrity as best as possible wet samples will often be swabbed with the swab then being placed in a vial or other airtight container individual samples should obviously all be stored separately to prevent contamination all biological samples are generally dried or frozen during transport and storage if the samples are to be dried they should be left to dry by air without the addition of heat as heat can be damaging to such specimens these extensive measures are taken to not only protect the samples for analysis but also to protect the staff handling the samples from biohazards such as infection from a biological sample the sample will then be transported to a laboratory so that the analysis can be conducted the primary goal of this analysis will be to establish exactly what the sample is though the answer may seem obvious from the appearance of the sample conclusive tests should always be conducted specific tests will be discussed in more detail later on the substance should also be subjected to species specific tests as the biological sample may belong to another animal 
rather than a human. After the completion of such confirmatory tests, DNA analysis may be conducted to identify the secretor of the sample. A biological sample may not always contain sufficient DNA to obtain a DNA profile. Individuals may be known as secretors or non-secretors. Secretors present aspects of their blood's protein in other bodily fluids, whereas non-secretors will not have sufficient levels of protein in their bodily fluid to establish a match between two samples. Fortunately, the percentage of the population who are non-secretors is comparatively small. Human body is largely composed of water. Life as we see it cannot become viable without water. A large variety of fluids are secreted inside and outside of the body. They include more than 28 different fluids such as blood, semen, saliva, milk, tears, sweat, urine, etc. List of biological fluid produced by the human body. Amniotic fluid, aqueous humor and vitreous humor, bile, blood serum, breast milk, cerebrospinal fluid, cerumen or earwax, endolymph, perilymph, exudates, pieces, gastric juice, lymph, mucus, pericardial fluid, peritoneal fluid, pleural fluid, pus, rheum, saliva, next is sebum or skin oil, next semen, sputum, synovial fluid, tears, sweat, vaginal secretion, vomit and lastly urine. Moving on to blood. One of the most common types of bodily fluid found at crime scenes, particularly in the scenes of violent crimes, is blood. Now, the appearance of blood is often quite distinct. Chemical tests are essential to confirm its identity. Initially, Presumptive tests are used at the scene which will merely confirm that the substance in question is most likely blood. Though the species is not established at this point, presumptive blood tests are usually based on the color change or chemiluminescence of a particular reagent when it comes into contact with the hemoglobin in blood. Luminol is frequently used in initially identifying blood stains, particularly if the perpetrator has attempted to clean up the blood, thus rendering it invisible to the naked eye. The presence of blood causes chemiluminescence the emission of light as a result of a particular chemical reaction. In this case of a blue-green color, however, luminol has been known to react 
with other substances including blood, saliva and various animal and vegetable proteins. The Castle Mere or phenolphthalein test is another presumptive blood test. The stain in question is collected with a cotton swab before drops of ethanol and phenolphthalein indicator are added. If no color change occurs, peroxide is then added. This detects the presence of the enzyme peroxidase in the blood, producing a pink color if present. Leucomalachite green or LMG is similar to the Castle Mere test, replacing the phenolphthalein with leucomalachite green. When added to the substance, a green color will be produced if blood is present. It is then necessary to confirm that the blood is of human origin as animal blood may be completely irrelevant to the crime under investigation. The precipitin test is used to determine the species of the blood's origin. Blood contains different proteins which vary between species, meaning that the proteins in the blood of one animal may not be accepted by the blood of another species. If a foreign protein is detected, antibodies are produced to protect the body from harm. Serum for this precipitant test is commonly obtained from rabbits as they have produced antibodies to destroy a small amount of human blood injected into them. This produced anti-human serum is added to the suspected blood stain. If the blood is of human origin, the serum will precipitate its proteins which can be visually observed. Samples of wet blood stains will usually be collected using a swab later sealed in an airtight container. Dried blood stains may be scraped onto a sheet of clean paper or into an appropriate bag. Any blood stained items that are collected should be stored separately from one another to avoid contamination and damage to the stains. Blood typing is one form of categorizing blood known as the ABO system. A, B, O and AB are the primary blood groups based on the presence of certain antigens on the surface of the blood cells. Before DNA testing, blood groups were used as a method of eliminating or incriminating suspects, though obviously not exclusively. Though the use of blood groups cannot specifically identify the individual from whom the blood originated from, they can narrow down the field of search and eliminate particular groups. Rhesus antigens are also commonly studied within the blood typing system. An individual whose cells do possess the rhesus antigens is known as being Rh positive. Likewise, those without the antigens are known as rhesus negative. Most people about 85% do possess the rhesus antigens. RBCs impart red color to blood due to the presence of iron 
containing protein hemoglobin which transports oxygen and carbon dioxide more precisely rbc's enriched with oxygen are red colored while rbc's devoid of oxygen are slightly purplish this is the reason why veins in the body appear bluish because they carry deoxygenated blood moving on to blood cells various cell types found in blood blood cells can be characterized on the basis of presence or absence of nucleus mature rbc's and platelets do not contain nucleus wbc's on the other hand contain nucleus and mitochondria wbc's contain dna and therefore enable a highly useful forensic dna examination of blood samples platelets are responsible for starting the clotting process which involves several factors and finally end in the formation of fibrin polymer which appear as clot blood groups red blood cells possess molecules called antigens on their surface in addition antibodies are also present in blood that recognize their corresponding antigens if a wrong antigen is introduced in the body it will be recognized as a foreign molecule by the antibodies present in the body this starts a process for destroying that foreign antigen this process is known as immune response since blood possesses these antigen and antibodies it can easily be characterized based on them 33 major blood group systems including the abo and rh systems were recognized by the international society of blood transfusion or isbt apart from the abo group there are several other group systems such as rh kel duffy etc now we will study about blood as forensic evidence let us try to understand how experimentally one can ascertain the blood type of the given unknown sample of blood found at the crime scene or elsewhere the evidence available through blood typing is not as convincing as genetic fingerprinting but it can readily prove innocence or increase the probability of a defendant being guilty all humans belong to one of four blood groups a b ab or o these blood groups are based on genetically determined antigens a and or or b that may be attached to the red blood cells a blood type is characterized by the presence or absence of these antibodies in it on adding a foreign antigen here anti serum the antibodies present in the sample will show rejection resulting in the clumping of blood cells following this reaction between antigens and antibodies the blood typing for an unknown sample can be done for example as you can see in this table blood type a 
will produce antibodies against antiserum B. That is, it will result in agglutination of the sample. Similarly, type B will show clumping when antiserum A will be poured. Blood type AB will show agglutination in both antiserum A and B as both antibodies A and B are present and lastly blood type O due to the absence of antibodies will not show any clumping or agglutination of cells. Further, whether the given sample is Rh positive or Rh negative for the given blood type, it can be checked by adding antiserum D. If clumping occurs, it indicates a positive Rh and absence of clumping signifies a negative blood type. Let us consider a sample of blood and find its blood type experimentally. A drop of the sample is taken on three glass slides. To these add one drop of antiserum A to first slide, a drop of antiserum B to second slide and lastly a drop of antiserum D to the third slide one by one. Now look for the presence or absence of agglutination that is clumping of blood cells. Example in this case Agglutination appears when antiserum B and antiserum D are added. Hence, the sample has the blood type B positive. Blood is one of the most significant evidence in forensic casework. Blood can establish the connection between a victim and the criminal. Let us understand this with the help of a case. A baby of two days was stolen from a hospital by the hospital staff. The concerned parents reported the case to police and an FIR was lodged. SOS alert was also generated in the PCRs. After questioning the hospital staff, they found a suspect couple with a newly born baby. The police officials detained the suspected couple and they were taken to the area magistrate. The magistrate asked the police officials to carry out the following identification process. First, is physical identification, second blood grouping and third is DNA testing. The first step was not sufficient because the child was of two days and babies of that age generally have similar appearances and hardly anything can be inferred. Now the second process is of blood grouping. The blood samples of the child, the original parents and also that of suspected parents were taken and sent to the forensic science laboratory for identification. The following method was applied in the laboratory. Blood group of the child is AB. Blood group of the victim mother is AB, that is IA, IB. Blood group of the victim father is A. 
homozygous that is ia ia so as per the rule the various probabilities will be ia 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 ib ia ia and ia ib therefore the possibility of the blood group of the child of this couple will be a and ab now blood group of the suspected mother a homozygous that is ia ia blood group of the suspected father o heterozygous that is ia io so as per the rule the various probabilities will be ia 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 io and ia io therefore the possibility of the blood group of the child of this couple will be only a as a is dominant over o forensic report the child has blood group ab and there is a strong possibility that the child belongs to the victim couple child handed over to custody of the original parents note in some cases it may not be possible to exclude the individuals through the blood grouping process and hence for confirmation dna analysis can also be done dna analysis of blood sample can fix its origin to a single individual blood is also an important evidence in toxicological analysis of various drugs and alcohol blood stain pattern analysis can reveal the mode of crime and movement of criminal as well as the victim blood spatter is a technique to reconstruct the event that led to the blood stain it includes analysis of the shapes locations and distribution of blood stains now moving on to semen semen is a thick yellowish white glairy opalescent secretion having a characteristic odor known as a seminal odor the fluorescence of the seminal stains is of a bluish white color semen identification is useful as evidence in sexual assault cases it can prove that the sexual assault crime was committed it can also help identify the criminal semen is composed of several components including sperm cells enzymes sugars minerals organic chemicals and vitamins four glands contribute their secretions to the seminal fluid that is testes seminal vesicle prostate and bulbourethral gland bulbourethral gland is also known as coppers gland next moving on to forensic examination of semen and overview as with other forensic exhibits the investigation of semen is also carried out in a methodical way using various tests first the screening tests are performed in order to identify whether the question stain is from semen once the preliminary screening tests are positive a more detailed confirmatory analysis is carried out 
to establish that the stain is indeed from semen. Further, exhaustive analysis of seminal stains is performed in order to individualize the stain to a particular individual. Finding sperm cells in semen. The identification of one or more sperms is a conclusive proof of the presence of semen. However, there are difficulties in the identification of sperms due to several reasons. If a criminal is oligospermic, then his ejaculate may contain only a few sperms. Another reason could be the condition of aspermia where no sperms are produced by the seminiferous tubules of the testis. If the criminal has undergone vasectomy, which is a surgical procedure for male sterilization to prevent sperms from entering into the seminal stream. In addition to these, there may be other reasons such as sperms trapped in the clothing not extracted into the testing extracts. Disintegration of sperms can also take place during handling of the material, etc. Finding sperm cells in body cavities of a victim of sexual crime is of utmost priority for obvious reasons. Several research findings indicate that motile and non-motile sperms can be obtained at different duration in different body cavities. For example, motile sperms can be obtained from the vaginal swabs of a victim within 6 to 28 hours of the assault. However, non-motile sperms which are devoid of flagella can be obtained for up to 10 days in vaginal cavity in certain cases. Now we move on to saliva. Saliva is a fluid largely composed of water with little amounts of electrolytes and enzymes. It is secreted by a pair of salivary glands in the mouth. Saliva is rich in the enzyme alpha amylase also known as salivary amylase or tylen. Tylen enzyme breaks down complex carbohydrates into smaller sugar molecules. Forensically, it is often seen in sexual assault cases. Saliva tests can reveal certain disease markers, viral infections and the presence of therapeutic as well as illicit drugs in the body. Saliva samples can be analyzed from various types of surfaces such as body parts, paper, envelopes, cigarette butts, plastic and glass bottles and metal cans etc. Examination of saliva. Saliva is an important evidence which can provide useful information about the personal contact of victim and the perpetrator. The presence of saliva can be ascertained by starch iodide and Fadabas test. Starch iodide and Fadabas test, however, do not confirm the presence of human saliva. These are merely the test for amylase activity regardless 
of whether that amylase has come from human or any other source. An advanced monoclonal antibody based test kit is used to identify human specific salivary amylase. With RSID method, if a stain gives positive reaction, then it is confirmed that human saliva is present. In addition, ABO group antigens can also be detected in saliva if the person is secretor. A secretor is an individual whose saliva and other body fluids contain ABO antigens. Approximately 80% individuals are known to be secretors. Finally, since saliva may also contain buccal mucosa cells, it is possible to identify the DNA profile of the person in question using advanced DNA profiling techniques. Next, we will study about urine content and identification. Urine is an important biological liquid for forensic analysis. A suspected urine stain may fluoresce pale yellow or pale blue when viewed under long and short wave UV light. Characteristic odor of urine may be detected by placing a small sample of the stain in a test tube and heating slightly. Urine contains two main constituents namely urea and creatinine. Both these components are tested for confirming the presence of urine. Urea nitrate crystal test and creatinine test are employed for such testing. Urine is also an important exhibit for forensic toxicological analysis. Almost all toxicants or their metabolites can be analyzed in urine samples using various analytical procedures. Vaginal secretions and feces. Vaginal secretions contain a mixture of cells and liquid. Vaginal secretions appear stiff on feeling when these are on clothing. Under UV light examination, these show fluorescence. Vaginal secretion contain squamous epithelial cells that are rich in glycogen. This enables them to be identified using Lugol's iodine test. In addition to cells, vaginal secretions also contains acid phosphatase enzyme. However, the acid phosphatase enzyme is much less as compared to the semen. Therefore, it is weakly positive for acid phosphatase. Pieces is a product of digestion. It is composed of digested waste, undigested food, cells, organic degradation products such as indole and skatole, etc. In addition, feces also contain urobilinogen, which is a colorless product of bilirubin reduction. About half of the urobilinogen is excreted in feces. Urobilinogen 
is frequently tested in order to confirm the presence of fecal stains. Forensically, vaginal secretions and feces have limited use because of the difficulty in analysis and lack of specificity in many forensic situations. Let us now recapitulate all what we have learned in this module. Various biological fluids produced by human body. RBCs impart red color to blood due to the presence of iron containing protein hemoglobin which transports oxygen and carbon dioxide. Blood cells can be characterized on the basis of presence or absence of nucleus. Red blood cells possess molecules called antigens on their surface. In addition, antibodies are also present in blood that recognize their corresponding antigens. DNA analysis of blood sample can fix its origin to a single individual. The fluorescence of the seminal stains is of a bluish white color. Saliva is rich in the enzyme alpha amylase also known as alpha amylase, salivary amylase or tylen. A suspected urine stain may fluoresce pale yellow or pale blue when viewed under long and short wave UV light. Vaginal secretion contains squamous epithelial cells that are rich in glycogen. Urobilinogen is frequently tested in order to confirm the presence of fecal stains. 